Hey and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to change the pads in a SRAM hydraulic disc brake system. I'm going to show you the tools you need and I'll kind of explain the parts of the brake system to you and then show you how to do it. It's a very very simple uh, procedure that can be done with minimal mechanical abilities and some very basic tools. Uh, it'll save you some money in the long run and some time because honestly you can do this in the time it would take it to, to take your bike to the nearest bike shop. So first off just to get some terminology out of the way so you know what I'll be talking about and you know what people at the bike shop are talking about. This roughly is your brake system. Um, up at the handlebar is your brake lever. When you squeeze that brake lever, the uh, hydraulic fluid, that's basically oil, comes down this hose and fills this. This part is called the caliper, which is uh, kind of the main part of your brake system. Inside the caliper, there are, diff uh, there are pistons. In my brake, there are four pistons. In some other brakes, there are only two, um, which uh, get pushed by the hydraulic fluid, which in turn push a pair of pads. And those pads will grab the rotor, which rotates and rotates as you're riding along so as soon as you squeeze that lever everything gets pushed and this get, basically gets squeezed and you stop and that's it it's a pretty simple system uh, that can be serviced pretty simply uh, you need some basic tools if you're lucky you can get away with one if you are not then you need three again really not that bad first off you need a six millimeter allen key and that's just to take my axle out so I can take the wheel off. Uh, a lot of you guys won't even need this because you have quick release axles and that simplifies things that much more. Second, you need a 2.5 millimeter Allen key and that's just to help loosen this bolt which will allow you to take your uh, pads out of the caliper. Third, I need a flathead screwdriver and that'll just be used so I can squeeze my pistons back into place so I can put the new pads in which will be thicker than the old ones so I can still fit the rotor into the caliper. I'm also going to need some new brake pads which kind of look like this in their retail packaging. I just bought some bulk ones. Uh, these are for my other bike. Uh, I bought some bulk ones but uh, they basically look like this when they're sitting on the shelf. I use metallic pads because they last longer and they are um, they, they're much better at dissipating heat than organic pads, so they don't overheat on long descents. They're also better in the rain and the mud, which living in the Pacific Northwest as I do is quite helpful. Um, the downside of metallic pads is that they do wear out the rotor uh, a little bit quicker and they're a lot noisier, but those are uh, things I'm willing to live with. I'm also going to be using this, which is an automotive brake cleaner, and that's just to clean everything up. This cost me like two bucks. It's a worthwhile investment. And finally, I'll be using a tiny bit of um, lube just to put around the pistons inside, just to make sure that um, they don't get uh, all full of dirt and keeps the water out and keeps everything sliding nice and easy. Now, with that said, let's get started. First, I'm going to take the wheel off. Easy peasy. All I need to do is take the axle out. Uh, like I said, for a lot of you guys, this is going to be much simpler because you just have to turn and twist the lever. But this isn't bad either, and that's it. From this moment on, make sure you do not touch your brake lever. Uh, at this point, if you squeeze your brake lever, then you could basically um, have everything falling out of your brake caliper and you'll have to re-bleed it and rebuild it and it's just a mess. So make sure you don't touch your brake lever. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my screwdriver in here and just gently pry these brake pads apart and that'll allow the pistons to retract into the caliper body because my new pads will be thicker and I need to need the extra room to get them in. This basically resets them to where they need to be. Now, next up, what I'm going to need is to take this out. Again, pretty simple stuff. Uh, first off, it has a little clip here at the end of this bolt 
I take that out and that's just a safety thing to make sure that this bolt doesn't accidentally undo itself. Then I'm going to take my 2.5 mil and just undo this. This again is just a safety feature that keeps your uh, your pads in place. Make sure they don't go flying, flying out. That's it, just comes out. Next up, I'm going to remove my pads. The easiest way to do this is kind of squeeze and they can usually be pulled out from the top. And of course, they're being a little difficult, but not too bad. And that's it. My brake pads have been removed. Now there's three parts to it when you take it out. There's a pad on one side, pad on the other side, and there's a little retainer clip. Um, if you're buying the retail packaging, it comes with an extra bolt, extra retaining clip, and that little safety clip for the bolt. I'm going to be reusing mine because what I bought from the store is just, looks just like this. It's just a couple of pads and that's it. Before I do anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the caliper a quick clean. I just want to make sure that I wash out the majority of the dirt and and dust and there's even some rust on the back of the pads you can tell so I want to make sure I give it a a good cleaning see I mean this is all just stuff that was in my brake caliper which is not something I want Okay, now that it's all clean, I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here just to make sure that my pistons can move freely. Uh, grease also helps you keep water and dirt and stuff like that out. Okay, so make sure you wipe away any excess grease. You do not want that on your braking surfaces. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little retainer and my new brake pad and just put them together, being careful not to touch the brake pad itself. And that's it. Next part, next part is a fiddly one where you have to kind of fit it inside the caliper. This can take a couple of tries. It's a very kind of unique shape. There we go. And that's it. It's pretty simple. After that, I need my little pin. Now you can tell that that's what holds everything here. Make sure that your pads stay where they are. And finally, my little safety clip. I'm also going to give my brake rotor a quick clean because you do not want any sort of built up dirt or debris on your brake rotor to get onto your brand new shiny pad. Once everything is done on the brake side, it's time for the wheel to go back in. 
and just make sure you line up the rotor with the space between the pads and avoid touching the rotor with your greasy hands and that's it uh, it's also really important that you properly break in your new pads what that means is don't take it straight to the nearest downhill park um, what you want to do is do a couple of dozen uh, low speed slow downs you don't actually want to stop what you want to do is just kind of transfer material from your pad onto your rotor and that'll help it uh, work well together all right that's it i'm going to do the same thing to the rear now i hope you found this video useful please don't forget to subscribe and let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover happy trails